Hello, my dear friends, best greetings from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Fursov, I am a research entomologist, beekeeper and teacher. Entomologist, I am a scientist, I am studying insects, small creatures which are living everywhere around. And I am entomologist, I am involved in the science of entomology, entomology is science about insects, about parasites, about different types of insects, about phytophagous insects, about parasitic insects, insects which have different lifestyles. I'm studying parasitoids, small tiny parasitoids were indicated on this poster. They have a very tiny size, just only one millimeter, two millimeters or five millimeters. Just they're flying everywhere around in grassland and forest areas, in parks, in steppe regions like plankton, they are practically invisible. But entomologists, they have very special skills. They can collect insects with different methods, with different traps, with different special entomological collecting methods for their study. Why they need to study them? Because insects and parasitoids are part of ecosystem. And they are interconnected all between them together. Even all these parasitoids were interconnected between phytophagous insects, predaceous insects, parasitic insects, and they have great influence on human beings, on animals around us. This is a tropical chain, ecological chain, which is very important for human beings. But at the present time, human beings becoming very crazy. And you know, I am in Ukraine, I'm streaming from Kyiv and Kyiv and Ukraine now in a quite difficult time. I wanted to say yesterday that we have a little bit of quiet time. Not at all. Last night, midnight, we have been attacked by Russian missiles. More than 10 missiles were shut down. Just and but we flew just to the direction of my city. Our air defense system was working pretty well. They're protecting us, protecting Ukrainians, protecting Ukraine in the front line and inside different secret places. So that's why I have this great opportunity to make this stream like in a peaceful time. But it's not peaceful time, especially in a front line between Ukraine and bloody neighbors, which are attacking us, and it's hard time. But, nevertheless, life is going on. And to show that life is going on, we are working, we are going to our job, we are trying to make research, and trying to prepare publications, even in these harsh conditions, under attacks of these cruise missiles, at night time, because of these crazy neighbors. Sorry for these crazy words, but that's a strange time, strange life. Let's start to talk about insects. And don't forget, support Ukraine. Support Ukraine and don't support bloody neighbors, which I'm talking about, you know, just in the eastern part. I am recording it, it will be recorded mostly about insects, but also I want to show you part of my city, Kyiv. For people who are not familiar about Ukraine, about Kyiv, not all of you just visited Ukraine in a peaceful time. Hopefully, sooner the sooner the better, we will receive opportunity to visit Ukraine in a peaceful time and see different landscapes and sightseeing. And I show you a little bit Kyiv on my the stream. Let's start and I will explain a little bit about Kyiv and then I will show you some insects, parasitoids, and phytophagous insects. This part we call Dnieper River and this is part in the downtown of city of Kyiv. You see, live Kyiv and this is Maidan of Independence or Square of Independence in the central part of city near the central post office, when people are crowding around. And this is a springtime, the most beautiful, the earliest spring flowers in Kyiv. We're now already, we have been a little in blossom, but now just new 
spring flowers appearing and these lilac flowers in our Rishko Botanical Garden and this is place called Vidubichi Monastery just nearby Rishko Monastery and near the Dnieper River and this is Folklore Museum in the village Pirogova in the summertime early summertime when flowers are flowering and it's a beautiful time this time is in the Shevchenko Tarashevchenko Park in the summertime because I can watch on these flowers and say this is summertime in the springtime it's different and this is old monument old monument of a friendship between Russia and Ukraine but now no friendship between Russia and Ukraine sorry about it and even no sorry about it this is tiny little sculpture and a view to the river Dnieper a place which is called Podil Podil region of a Kiev city and this is a red building of a Kiev National University name after Taras Shevchenko in Taras Shevchenko Park with flowers which are changing from the springtime to summer and autumn different and this is a Saint Sophia Cathedral and Saint Sophia Square and this is a monument to Bogdan Khmelnytsky and this is Saint Michael Cathedral just nearby just in front of Saint Sophia Cathedral in the downtown of city of Kiev the cathedral which was restored in 90s yeah, about 30 years ago and this is just square of European square in near Khrushchev Khrushchev this and European square this is again Taras Shevchenko monument in the Taras Shevchenko park in the summertime beautiful skies and clouds and greener area in the downtown of city Kiev the most central part even Russians sent the rocket in this place it was explosion near this monument some years some not years ago some months ago so don't forget about subscribing to my channel but I will continue to show you another views of city of the Kiev I have some recorded pre-recorded video these are beautiful tulips in the springtime some pre approximately now and up to the first days of May the most beautiful time in Kiev this is flowering tulips tulips in blossom and Kiev chestnut trees will be in blossom chestnut tree this is a symbol of Kiev and tulips are beautiful in the springtime this is Maidan of Independence of Square of Independence and this is a street which is called Street of Celestials hundreds devoted to hundred more than 100 people who were lost their life in the fighting for freedom of Ukraine so this name was Institutes can now just change the name to Celestial hundreds here yellow of tulips in the park Shevchenko Tara Shevchenko Park springtime the most bright time with flowers in Kiev I guess so now it's not so many flowers in park but still we have flowers everywhere around because springtime is and many flowers in blossom and this is square of independence with fountains in the summertime so you can see here it was some years ago far away just in front of this is a building of trained unions left part this is building of central post office and here usually a place where I'm meeting for youth and for people who enjoyed life so again Tara Shevchenko Park with ocean of tulips in the May time just sculpture of Tara Shevchenko is in front of the red building of a Kyiv National University, Taras Shevchenko National University, in the center of Kyiv on Volodymyrska Street, just closed to my institute where I'm working. Here, this is a bell, Saint Sophia bell, and in the right part, this is a Saint Sophia Cathedral. Pro bell is 19th century built and monasteries suppose so that it was built about in the 10th century more over 1000 years old 
This is a historical monument heritage of Ukraine. Here are some flowers in the Hrishko Botanical Garden, as I remember. Again, springtime now, like now, in April time, April time, hyacinths, flowers of spring, which are smelling very well. After flowers, we will see also just insects, don't, don't forget about it. Ocean of Tulips in Park Shevchenko, I guess should so. Very pleasant time to record and watch and observe and enjoy it in, this, in the May time. Now it's a little bit cold, 15 degrees, but the day is becoming warmer and warmer, and this is probably the first days of May. This is again square of independence in nearly sunset time. Here some posters do, devoted to Ukraine. And this is column with a lady Ukraine on the top. And this is magnolia flowers. Magnolia flowers flowering now, just I visited Fomina Botanical Garden near University. Kiev National University and near Metro University. And this is a nice place with the flowers of Magnolia. We have two places, two, three botanical gardens in two of them. In Grishko Botanical Garden and Fomina Botanical Garden, we have special locations with beautiful magnolias. In this time, just before May, we have in blossom. Here, this is Fontaine, Square of Independence, and the right side, this is a Musical Philharmony, very famous musical Philharmony. We replace with different nice musical concerts. Here again, back meeting in University Botanical Garden, people enjoying springtime and magnolia flowers in blossom, taking photos and enjoying themselves. And at present time, we're all this magnolia also in blossom. Now, so if you have time, and if you are in Kiev, welcome to University Metro and visit Fomina Botanical Garden. Enjoy magnolia. This was a time of a sort of club cup in Kiev. So this is just model of sort of championship, which was in 2011. I guess so, 2011 or 2017, a few years ago. So that's why this championship Sotsa Cup on the square. And here this is a Sakura flowers. Sakura flowers, I recorded it quite close on the top near the Hotel Ukraine in Independence Square in the downtown. They're in blossom in the springtime. In here we are going back to Vidubichi Monastery in Grishko Botanical Garden and view to the left part, a left bank of a Dnieper River. We have to Patona Paton Bridge and region on the left bank of a city Kiev. Where this botanical garden on the right bank and this buildings on the left bank. Here, some historical religious places, I guess so, I recorded. This is a wooden church, yes. I remember this is a wooden church, very tiny, small, traditional church, which is built in Pirogova village, in ethnographical village in Pirogova. Going back to Maidan of Independence, of Square of Independence, to musical fountains. Last year we didn't have musical fountains because it's a harsh time with bombing around Ukraine and it's also in Kyiv. So probably now we also don't have it. We will not have it because harsh time is still continuing. But who knows? We are just fighting and hoping and believe to our army. Okay, and now let's start to show you some interesting insects. We can... Insects... 
and I show you my insects were very tiny. And I show you what I do in entomologists with insects. Entomologists making this type of collection. You see my insects, my small parasitoids were very tiny, just only one millimeter size, or some of them even half a millimeter size. Well, like small tiny black points. Why we have here red pieces of paper? Here this pieces of paper that are named labels and red labels. This is because these species are new for the science, new for entomology, and they have been described in the scientific literature. That's why we have received special identification label and label which is marking type material. The type material is labeled with a red red label. Let's show you some other insects. Some parasitoids, quite big one, like this one. You see, this is a parasitic wasp. Why parasitic wasp? Because this is a parasitoid. This very funny slender insect, which is named Ichneumonid wasp. Ichneumono wasp of an order Hymenoptera and this family Ichneumonidae with very long tail and long tail. This is not a sting, not at all. This is long tail is named ovipositor. This small, this big, not small, this slender parasitoid is about four centimeters and using this ovipositor for parasitization of its host. Where this parasitoid is laying eggs for their larvae. And some parasitoids are very tiny. And there are even some of these parasitoids, some of these small parasitic wasps, they are living inside your house, inside your house, inside your kitchen. Even you probably don't know about it, you have not noticed it. Because you see here, this is a piece of dry cake. I just keep it in my laboratory, but you can find it in your on the shelf of your kitchen if you forgot a piece of bread. Because this bread is usually infested with beetles. With bread beetles, and bread beetles are infested with parasitoids. Because these black insects these are parasitic wasps of a family Pteromalidae. You see, rounded circles, this is end emergence holes, exit holes of beetles. And from beetles, in, inside these beetles, inside the larvae of beetles, these tiny wasps were developing. And now beetles hatched and parasitoids hatched as well. And you see a piece of cake with holes after emergence of beetles and parasitoids. And the size of this tiny, small, like a fly, but not a fly, but small, parasitic wasp. Just only one millimeter and a half. Very tiny. But you can notice them just by accident or intentionally. If you look carefully on the window, because these parasites were flying, were searching for host for this bread beetle, and we're making, which is we call, biological control. We're making this biological control. We suppress population of beetles. So that's why we're beneficial wasps. We're not stinging because they're too small, too tiny, but they destroy, they infest paras parasitically, they infest beetles, and they, they larvae, the larvae of beetle, developing inside the larva of beetles. So these tiny wasps, very beneficial because if we find somewhere the larva of beetle, this tiny parasitoid will oviposit egg in larva of beetle and beetle is dying. And only new wasp will come, which is not eating the bread not feeding on a cake, but will search only for new larvae, some hidden somewhere in your kitchen. So this is very funny, very nice. All right, here I showed it already. 
Ok. Mm. Well, well, well. Let's show you some Paris Zetoids. Here I have a collection of different videos. Come, come, come. Here we have selection of different insects. Here this is not a parasitoid, but parasitic wasp of a super family Scolioidea, family Scolioidea, which is named Mammoth Wasp, Mammoth, because so huge, about three centimeters size or three and a half centimeters, and developing inside of beetles, rhinoceros beetles. See, he, here you can recognize easily this is a bumblebee, bumblebee, which is just searching for exit and just using his tongue, using proboscis, just for feeding, because on the right side he has a piece of honey. So honeybees do like honey, so give them honey and they will feed it very well. And here this is a parasitoid of family Ichneumonidae, a huge female of a genus Megarissa. And this is I am recording just outside of my apartment, just nearby. I put my video my video camera just on this parasitoid because parasitoid is too busy and not afraid of me because ovipositor is inserted inside and cannot escape. And here these are butterflies, papilio butterflies, papilionide family the common play, common object of collecting. Most of people like collecting butterflies. Butterflies are so beautiful, that's why people like collecting butterflies, making entomological collection of butterflies and beetles. But I collect tiny parasitoids for my study and for research. So, but try to collect too many butterflies. And this is beetle of a Genus Dorcus, stag beetle, stag beetle. They soon come, they will very soon emerge from the woods because the larvae developing inside rotting woods. So if you have some cut trees, so they're developing inside these old trees. That's why approximately in May and June these beetles will appear on some roads, even in cities. And this is a tiny parasitoid, which is sized just only half of a millimeter. Don't worry, because he is not so huge, not half of screen. Size of this tiny small wasp of a family, Mimaridae, fairy flies in English. Fairy fly, because they're so tiny, so fragile. And this, this is a female, which is using antennae on the right side searching for parasite to parasitize the host, the egg of tiny leafhopper. Again, we are going back to Pieridae family, beautiful Pieridae family. Many Lepidopterists enjoy themselves, their, themselves and also their butterflies in their collection, because these Pieridae fam family butterflies very bright. We have also dimorphism in males and in females, so we have a different coloration. But entomologists and amateurs try to collect just several specimens for variations. So this is a flower chaffer, flower chaffer. Scarabee the family, and you see on the, between legs something like white. What's that near the head? These are mites. These are phoretic mites. These are mites not so dangerous for beetles, don't worry about it. But these are mites like tiny po points, you see, white points near the head. They're traveling on the body of beetle. And this is very strange insect with very strange antenna. It's a really very funny insect. Tipulide family. Tipulide. This is a fly. This is not mosquito, but a relative to mosquito. And family, the order family Tipulide and order Diptera. And this lovely, very lovely butterflies were developing 
und some very nice plants, even near Kiev, but they're pretty rare. And this species is in the list of protected species because in a red list protected species in Ukraine. But this is a scientific collection of variation. Okay, you are going back to this flower chuffer, flower chuffer, which is just crossing the screen on the body of a Dorcus star beetle. You see black one, this is a star beetle, Dorcus genus, and this is one flower chuffer. And you see here, this chuffer is just covered with some yellow pollen flowers because especially these flower chaffers they enjoy very much to eat pollen on some flowers. Here we see parasitoidal family Ichneumonidae which is doing something, what she is doing. This female is doing grooming, cleaning, cleaning the body using palpi maxillary, palpi mandibulare and using his mandibles to squeeze legs between mandibles, squeeze and clean it very much, cleaning first pair of legs to make it clean and healthy. And here, fireflies, pyrocorisopterus, fireflies, pyrocorisopterus, now they're coming in mass number around lime trees because they were hibernating and now it's sunny days so they're coming, enjoying their mating. You see here, they're linked together. So these are male and female, they're mating. I cannot recognize here who is male, who is female, but because they're so similar. But these are males, males and females. And here, bumblebee with pollen, with pollen on, on its baskets. I just got it just by accident and of course I gave just a piece of honey for bumblebee because if you, your bumblebee just came to the room try to feed a bumblebee with small drop of liquid sugar or with drop of honey and bumblebee will like it very much and then we'll escape and we'll find the way where they are, where are living and here we are coming back to mammoth wasp Again, this is a female, female of Megascolia maculata. Megascolia, Megascolia. It means very big, big scolia, Megascolia maculata, because female has four yellow spots on abdomen. But this is a head with head with two huge mandibles, just looking down and two antennae. And here, the head portrait of Dorcus stag beetle. You see again mandibles, black mandibles, two eyes and two antennae. And this is beetle coming down with head with two eyes, two facet eyes and two mandibles. So thank you for your attention. If you have some questions, welcome to ask your questions on my channel in comments or in private message. And I can show you or subscribe to my channel for sure. Press like and write your questions and come to my Patreon page. And I show you the one parasitoid more, few parasitoid more. This parasitoid is about uh, one centimeter size, quite big one because this is a family Calcidide, Calcidide, and this is a female of Calcis, which is making very important process of ovipositioning, ovipositioning, because this is egg larval parasitoid. This very big parasitoid laying eggs in very tiny eggs, in tiny larvae nearly before hatching larva, because these are larvae of Stratiomyidae, Aquatic mosquitoes, aquatic flies, and the larvae of this, we are just moving there. You see, black larvae, black worms, tiny worms, about one millimeter. This big parasitoid lay egg inside 
tiny larva and inside this tiny larva will develop in larva of this big parasitoid because when the larva will be growing you see here this is a batch this is a batch group of eggs sitting and female is sitting on this eggs and just busy busy not visible but slowly slowly laying eggs through ovipositor inside this tiny larvae larvae must come to the water developing in mud inside the water and on the bottom of water and when larva of this fly becoming big about two centimeters size we are flying and just hiding somewhere in the soil but inside the big larva of this fly would be the larva of this parasitoid and parasitoid will hatch from the growing larva of this fly so this is a very unique very interesting parasitoid i recorded it just in a field but this parasitoid was recorded in laboratory and this parasitoid is very tiny this tiny parasitoid parasitic wasp of the family pteromalidae the same like i showed you parasitoid of bread beetles but this is a parasitoid you see on the down part of the abdomen right side of the screen you see a tiny needle you see two pair of legs three and th third pair of leg and between them just very tiny needle and this needle is ovipositor so this is a female with ovipositor and female is laying eggs from the, through this ovipositor inside puparium inside puparium where is there is a pupa of fly because this is a parasitoid of fly of a family pteromalidae and size approximately one millimeter and a half so that's why this is under microscope because this parasitoid is like a plankton flying very quickly and sometimes practically invisible but entomologists usually very careful especially parasitologists and calcidologists must be very careful to collect parasitoids even very small one millimeter and half of millimeter and the smallest less than half of millimeter yes there are some parasitoids less than one half of millimeter and the last but not the least i show you interesting beetle and probably you can imagine why i'm showing this tiny beetle because this beetle belonging to the family Curculianidae weasels on screen it's too big on screen it's huge like a dog but you see so nice shape nice shape of a rostrum nice shape on the head and where this beetle is living i show it with a special purpose because this beetle is living in the flowers of dandelion yes in dandelion now this is a springtime springtime and this beetle is laying eggs inside the stem of dandelion and larva is living inside these tiny stems of dandelions everywhere around they're flying everywhere around in dandelion grassland and developing very quickly because larva of this beetle living inside the stem of dandelion then it just moving from the down part to the top to the flower flower head and making eating feeding inside the flower head and then falling down and falling down to the soil because this larva is pupating not inside the flower head you see you know flower head of dandelion will open very quickly maybe we can say that infested head of dandelion will be not uh, making so same quality seeds but still will make some seeds but the larva of this beetle will fall down to the soil and pupating inside the soil and hibernate inside the soil and then hatch just next year but i show it why because there is also parasitoid i cannot show it immediately because it's on a separate file but this par this tiny dandelion has a parasitoid of a family 
Eulophide, which is developing inside <coughs> larva of this beetle. So parasitic on this of a genus Entodon, Entodon, which is developing inside the larva of this beetle. And also developing just in the soil and hibernating in the soil and will hatch just again in the springtime. Now these beetles are hatching from the soil and their parasitoids hatching from the soil all together because they're trophically connected. Beetles as phytophagous insects and parasitoids as parasitic insects. So this is a story about parasitoids. Big one, big parasitic wasp, like Megascole. Parasitic wasp, Megascole, you say, you, you may say this is a huge parasitoid, huge parasitic wasp, three centimeters, and very tiny parasitoids, one millimeter size, and the smallest, half of millimeter, or even less than half of millimeter. So parasitoids are different from the big till the middle size, or some of them as ichneumonid wasps, very huge one. Two centimeters or even more than three centimeters with very long ovipositor. But I will show you Megarisa with its very long ovipositor in my next video. Follow my channel, follow my new streams, and you find many new interesting stories in my inside my video lectures. Just check my channel, check folders with my lectures about insects, about parasitoids, about beetles, about butterflies, about night moths, and especially about hymenoptera, about bees, about wasps, about parasitic wasps, parasitoids. And I will follow this idea to show you more new stories about parasitic wasp parasitoids and also will record new stories just in laboratory. So check my channel from time to time and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you subscribe so you will receive some notice and internet and just YouTube will just remind you about new stories on my channel. So and you will come again and again to see new stories. And don't forget subscribe to Google and Gmail. If you subscribe to Gmail, if you open your Gmail email, you can write your private message. Like on my Gmail email, you can send private message privately. <coughs> or openly, you can write your comment under this video, under this video and ask your questions. Or you can ask secret questions on this private email. And don't forget, we will come soon on my channel, on my video streams. Maybe tomorrow, if I have time. And mind, I will continue my video streaming tomorrow as well. And don't forget, Ukraine is fighting for you, for freedom and independence. And don't forget, Subscribe to my channel and support Ukraine. Good luck. See you soon on my channel. Bye-bye. Ukraine forever. See you soon on my channel.